the one third of life we spend in bed is determining the quality mm -hmm. and longevity, longevity of the life we live outside the bed. So obstructive sleep apnea is a breathing disorder that mm -hmm. basically manifests itself at night when we are sleeping, mm -hmm. and when the airway is unable to stay open and collapses or the flow gets limited, oxygen drops, it conduces a condition called arousal or a fight or flight. Imagine you're being choked every night in bed multiple times per hour. Now imagine what's gonna happen to your nervous system. Mm -hmm. Cardiovascular conditions, stroke, diabetes, whole host of metabolic conditions over the years, decades to be exact, have been linked to obstructive sleep apnea and breathing disorders at night. Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. And welcome everyone to Answers for Elders radio network heard across the USA and spring has sprung in the Pacific Northwest and across the USA. And we're very interested in hearing all of the new things that everyone is talking about this season for the spring. And we're excited because we have a brand new topic today, something called sleep apnea. And I am so honored to have Dr. Bahar Ismali, and she is the Vice President of Clinical Integration at Vivos Therapeutics. And Dr. Ismali, he, she plays a key role in advancing innovative treatment solutions for sleep disordered breathing and dental facial development. We're going to learn all about that in the show um, today. But Vivos, um, just for your information, they're a leading healthcare company and they're dedicated to addressing root causes of sleep apnea and other airway related disorders through non invasive patient fo focused treatment options. Options and you know my um, my thought is many of us may have a spouse that has sleep apnea or something like that or they they're snoring and they do certain movements or anything like that. So you may think about is this happening around you? Um, this is something that's really important for us to discuss today, and it's one in three older adults are at risk of the sleep apnea epidemic. So doctor, um, I am so glad to have you on the show, Dr. Ismaili. Thank you so much, Susan, for having me. I'm delighted to share some of my experience and my perspective mm -hmm. regarding this devastating plague of our generation. Mm -hmm. Maybe though the one third of life we spend in bed is determining the quality mm -hmm. and longevity, longevity of the life we live outside the bed, the other two third. Absolutely. Vice versa. Absolutely. Carry what we have during the day to bed. And it's just this vicious cycle repeat itself. Mm -hmm. and at some point, if we start addressing things from a proper perspective, we're going to have much better quality of life, especially mm -hmm. with our aging population, because we living longer now, right? But we are. Not and, and, and you quality. know, the baby boomers, they're looking at their aging years differently. There's a lot of good things about that, yep. but there's also a lot of denial going on. There's a lot of of limitations that they place on themselves because uh, they don't want they don't want to appear getting older and yet we are me as a baby boomer i'm about to turn 69 next week so i know that story i know how this works and obviously um you know you talk about obstructive sleep apnea and that's a term that you you use a lot um in your studies um what exactly is obstructive sleep apnea yeah, for those folks out there, that's the first time they're hearing this. They might have been dealing with symptoms of this disease, but they mm -hmm. didn't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. And at the core of it, it's accumulation of things that will appear. And then finally, we have a medical diagnosis attached. So obstructive sleep apnea is a breathing disorder that mm -hmm. basically manifests itself at night when your airway, to be exact, the upper part, which is behind your tongue, collapses. Turbulence yeah. in the air entering into our system in the most susceptible part of our uh, being, which is in horizontal position when we are sleeping. Mm -hmm. When the airway is unable to stay open 
and collapses or the flow gets limited, oxygen drops, it conduces a condition called arousal or a fight or flight. Imagine you're being choked every night in bed multiple times per hour. Now imagine what's going to happen to your nervous system. Yeah. Sympathetic, fight or flight. That just basically starts a whole cascade of inflammatory cycles because imagine your nervous system responds to this event every time it happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cardiovascular conditions, stroke, diabetes, whole host of metabolic conditions over the years, decades to be exact, have been linked to obstructive sleep apnea and breathing disorders at night. Yeah, yeah. And to think about, you know, how many uh, boomers maybe are getting up several times in the night because yeah. they wake up. Um, could that, that obviously there's something going on within their system right. that causes their, their sleep to be disrupted. Are those kind of, um, I, I guess there's a lot of warning signs if you don't know if you have it. Um, yeah. And we're going to obviously talk about that in the show today, but mm -hmm. I am interested also in the health risks of, you know, as sleep apnea happens, what happens to the body and how is that, you know, an overall risk to quality of life? You know, Susan, I think we are not taking this condition as seriously as we should, because mm -hmm. really, if we understand why sleep is important, then we may take to take it seriously why disruption in sleep is detrimental to our health. The reason yeah. why we have sleep cycles and the reason why we, our bodies need rest is because during the time that we're in bed, our brain and body go into a state of recharge, regenerate, removing you know, metabolic toxins, mm -hmm. other toxins from our, our system. So the way yeah. that the brain during bed to be exact when the brain waves are slow wave when we're not thinking we're not associated with functions in deep state of sleep a lot of amazing mm -hmm. things happen for the body and brain one sure. of which is removing some of the toxins beta amyloid is actually one of the toxins that gets removed from our wow brain, which improves memory now imagine yeah, it includes all that's a big factor it's in a big all one things. exactly and when that process is disrupted that deep state is missing the delta waves for those folks that are not familiar that deep state when the brain and body are dissociated you know you don't remember much of that part of sleep the juicy productive restorative sleep is important for the health of body and homeostasis when you're mm -hmm. not getting that part brain does not have its memory restored and removal of lack of removal of toxins is going to have negative impact on functionality of the brain dementia has been actually linked alzheimer and dementia has been linked to breathing disorder and to be specific sleep breathing disorder mm -hmm. so you can mm -hmm. see the impact it has long term on not just health but quality of life yeah. You know, you could see how that could be detrimental in, you know, seven, eight decade of life when we actually need to be more in, um, you know, present with our loved sure. ones, enjoy quality of life. We see more and more of these kind of surfacing mm -hmm. because a lot of these underlying issues of not being looked at. It's not something that um, gets checked in routine visits. Mm -hmm. Sleep mm -hmm. is not something that comes up. Yeah. In, you know. And obviously, if you're not getting good quality sleep, you're putting so much more stress on your nervous system um, and and really your stress factors that going on in everyday life, that sure. can affect things like heart disease and high blood That's pressure true. and all kinds of stuff. Um, to, but why is it? You might, you know, somebody here and thinking, why is this not making it to mainstream? Because really our focus is we're looking at people when they have severe obstructive or moderate sleep apnea, mm -hmm. even mild cases get um, sure. basically ignored for lack of better term, because yeah. it's not something that immediately impacts you. It mm -hmm. gradually takes you down yeah. and we call it, 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 it's almost like mixed in with the aging process. Mm -hmm. You don't need to age like that. That should not right. be a part of aging process. As a matter of fact, the best way to age is to be in good health, have good memory, um, body ability to restore itself, to be able to move. So none of this is really a normal part sure. of aging. Sure. It's just not addressed in a timely manner mm -hmm. and it advances itself into our um, yeah. later years in life. Yeah. Obviously, this is an underdiagnosed 
situation. And, um, you know, in closing, we may think that just because we wake up several times a night, we don't have sleep apnea, but there, there's a lot of things that probably are indicators. Um, there's a lot of connections between the quality of sleep and your everyday life. And yes. Dr. B um, we are going, you and I are going to talk about this um, a lot in this hour. And so we're very excited. In the meantime, how do we reach you? Well, um, the best way to reach me is contacting Vivos directly, vivos.com. Mm -hmm. And also on Instagram, I have a very active page. I post constantly information all regarding breathing and sleep. And you are going to love my Instagram handle at the Airway Queen. And for those oh. who love a podcast, I started a podcast bringing pretty much patients I have treated with their host of symptoms and experts with what their perspective is from chiropractors to functional medicine to all areas of this. medicine for those who are interested to learn more. Check it out and all of where you get your podcast. The title is If Your Mouth Could Talk. Fabulous. And we're going to be right back right after this. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.